sharpen pencils, clear your desk. It's time to increase your nerdiness with Derek. That's right, it's time once again to increase your nerdiness. I'm your host, Derek W. Truesdale. Great to be with you again on the podcast slash live show slash YouTube video. I'm running a little behind this week, but uh, we're kind of we're doing two nights in one here on the Truesdale Show, so this will be a lot of fun. Anyhow, uh, I want to respond right away to some comments from last week, which was about bits, bytes, and binary. And one very astute viewer made a an excellent video comment. He's like. Since 1996, I think it might have been 99 or so, 1024 is called a kilobinary byte, or a kib, uh, under, and then 1,000 is, is called a kilobyte. Now, that's a really good point, because um, there actually is a distinction, and, and it, it's been confusing for years and years and years, and I guess I helped to propagate this last week, that there's there is a difference between a binary megabyte and a decimal megabyte. Well, a wise standards commission sat down and wanted to make sure they they put an end to that confusion. So that is when they coined the term. You know, they have kibibytes and gibibytes and tibibytes, or is it a terabibibyte? I don't know what it's called, but uh, it's a tib would be the abbreviation. And so that actually is a way to distinguish between one or the other. So I guess they kind of did say, all right, a kilobyte, that actually is a thousand, but a kibabyte, that's different. And uh, also, I believe he made mention that, um, yes, he mentioned that Windows measures with the (coughs) kilobytes, gigabytes, but they're actually gibabytes and stuff like that. So... The term has changed over the year, the years, or rather, it's been standardized. So I thought that was a really great correction. I should have known that too, because I do, you know, I've used Ubuntu, and I, I see the memory and 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 so forth reported in kibibytes. So there you go. Extra uh, trivia for you, and uh, you know, at, at some point, I'm gonna have to put up a Derek is wrong blog post. So I can have all the corrections from, like, ever. It's like, no, I messed up here. I messed up here. That wasn't right either. (sighs) Could I really do as bad as Christina Aguilera? I don't think so. Anyhow, on to this week's lesson. In the past, I have uh, recommended programs that involve a little bit of command line work. And I realized that this can cause some confusion. So this week... The topic is on using the command line, or terminal as the case may be, and it's a little bit of programming flavoring thrown in there. Anyhow, there are three basic things we're going to get into. I just want to lay some groundwork, because I have gotten comments, really good comments in the past, from people that say, uh, you throw all these terms at me, I don't know what the heck you're talking about. Now, on one hand, I am going for the target audience that you'll do your research and you're not afraid to study something out. However, it is important to sort of establish the rules and the terms and everything before we get going. So I figured it would be fair to spend a little bit time of time on the uh, command prompt. Anyhow, the easiest way to get to that, and I'll bring my command prompt up here. Now, there are th- just a few things you need to to know. There are just a few simple principles you have to keep in mind when attempting to operate a sophisticated piece of machinery like this table saw. Anyhow, the first thing we're going to do when we enter a command is we need a command to enter. So the way you can get to the command prompt in Windows, and I apologize if this is repetitive to you guys, but you go to start and run and you type CMD and there's your command prompt. And I already have one here, so we're going to be working from that. So first, we need a command. Now watch this. I actually have to go back to like one of the pa- the direct... I have to go up the tree. We're going to be discussing paths in just a bit. But if I'm here and I type 
FFmpeg. It's going to have this nice error message that says, what the heck is that? I don't recognize it. It's not a command. What the heck are you talking about? However, if I was to type dir to get a directory listing and type that out, well, there's stuff here because it's an internal command. It's something built in to the whole system. So that's the thing. First, we need some kind of command. Now, we also have um, switches to the commands where we can add an option. So here we go. I'm going to type dir, and I believe it is slash s, and that gives me extra listings. All right, I'll show you the first time. Here's the first one I pushed, all right? It just, <clears throat> it just shows one folder here, folder one, but if I type dir slash s, it shows the subdirectories and stuff right there. So that's a switch. We have a command. We have a switch. And the other thing that's kind of like it is a path. You have to know where you are on the computer. Now, right here, I'm on the specially created drive O. That's our path. And you've got to think of a file system on the computer as a tree. All right, you have the root of the tree and then branches that come out and it, it branches out into subdirectories and a whole bunch of uh, extra files which is why obviously the root is the most important now this is why when people hack their android phones they call it rooting the phone and uh, hackers will say oh i rooted him and i think that's the word on the streets but that's what they say uh when they got the high privileges of a system anyhow in Windows, we go by drive letter. We happen to be on drive O here. If I type C colon, now we're on C. If I, and then I can type O colon, we're back to O. That's how that works. On the internet, it's similar, where we have a server and then a port, and then you can have uh, folders and files after that. And of course, on Linux or Unix-like systems, will I get sued for saying Unix-like? I don't know. I better watch out. I mean, that's actually a picky uh, thing with the trademark police or, or whatever the term is for that. But in uh, Linux, just there's a plain old slash, and that is the root directory. Now, one kind of trivia thing, for some cutesy reason, um, the MS-DOS guys who made Windows, for some reason, they have a backslash instead of a forward slash. I don't know. Maybe they just wanted to be different or make things more confusing. That's just the way it is. Eventually, you learn to think like that. Now, just like I typed dir here in um, the command prompt, if we were in terminal on Linux, or uh, I, is it called terminal on Mac? It might be called that. Um, I'm not sure exactly. I haven't used it in a while. But if we were to type ls, then we get a listing. So it's the same thing. You've got your command, and then you can put on different switches, and you need to know the path. Now, I'm going to talk about that for a little and show how it pertains to what we're doing. I'm in the old O drive, remember here. If I type dir, we actually have a folder here. There's folder 1. See that, folks? Okay. Now, so I can say cd folder 1. Now I'm in folder 1. Voila. By the way, Linux is case sensitive, so I couldn't be this sloppy if I was using it. You got to be careful with that. Uh, and then within that folder, I have folder 2. And there's another sort of shorthand thing where the current directory is called dot. It's just a dot like that. So if we said cd dot, we're still in the same place, all right? That's the current directory. If I said cd dot dot, raise your hand if you know what that means, that means the parent directory. We're going up the tree one here, okay? So here we go. We have folder one, and uh, I can actually make a folder. What is it? In uh, I think it's just md. I'm, I'm getting Linux and command mixed up, but I'm going to say md folder three. All right, so now we have that. And I'm also going to uh, bring up the GUI here, it's called, where we can actually see this. We, I'm pushing the up button. This takes us up the tree. And you'll see that in the O drive, we have folder 2 and folder 3. And folder 2 has all this fun stuff. So any changes I make here, you would see in the command prompt. Any changes that I make in the command prompt, you would see right there. We can automate things. That's another 
fun thing. If you look here, I actually have a batch file in folder 2. And we're going to edit this. And you'll see that all it, all it has is the word, uh, the command, CMD. And so when you click on that, it takes you to that folder. Folder 2, just like we're here. Folder 2. And you open it up. Now, you could put all kinds of fun stuff in your uh, batch file, which is a great way to automate things. And when we get into AVI synth, it'll be really helpful to, uh, to know about um, code writing. And this is sort of an introduction to that. You can think of a command prompt as you enter one line of code at a time. Now, uh, you could do lots of stuff like, uh, let's see... We'll go to, we'll use the attribute command here. Okay, let's see. Attrib minus H minus R C colon IO dot sys. Okay, that'll be the first li line of our batch file. And then we say DEL C colon backslash IO dot sys. Now, if you're following along, don't ever do this. This is really a bad thing to do. I'm just, it's just kind of a, a bit of humor. <laughs> I hope nobody tries this in real life on YouTube. But Truesdale said, you know, format C drive. Okay, you know, you could enter a whole bunch of commands like that. And, and that's what a batch file does. It'll enter one after another and execute them. So, uh... Be careful before you click on something and execute it. Oh, and one more thing I have to mention. This it, this really bugs me. Windows does this, and so does OS X at the moment. I believe they do this still. See how each of my files has an extension? We have an exe, which is an executable. TXT is a text file. Anyhow, in Windows, they hide... The file extension, which can be maddening. I have gotten feedback from people who could not get a program that I recommended to work or an AVI synth script because they're saying one thing and then Windows is making it another. So in folder options, under view, you want to go to this thing right here. And I it really bugs me, but they have this checked by default in Windows hide extensions for known file types don't do that uncheck that box and you'll be on the same page you'll know what the heck we're talking about and there won't be confusion like that i've even had this happen where i had a cousin who was applying for a job and he's trying to save a word document and for some reason it wasn't working no one could open it and it turns out that because Windows was hiding the file extension, he thought he was saving it as a dot .doc, but it was actually dot .doc dot something else because Windows was hiding the file extension. So I don't know if maybe he was using Open Office or some thing like that. But just to be on the same page, if you ever want advice on command line stuff, make sure you actually see the file extensions. So there you go, three things. We have our command, we have switches to that command, and the path. And with those three things, all the very complicated things you could do in um, most computer languages are just made with those simple things. Well, that's it for this time. Remember, you can find the podcast at DerekForPresident.com. And I'll see you next time on Increase Your Nerdiness. Sharpen pencils, clear your desk. It's time to increase your nerdiness with Derek.